Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. From their upcoming 23rd studio album, there's a title track from the new album from Saxon called Carpe Diem. And on the phone, I have none other than their lead singer, Biff Byford. How are you doing, Biff? I'm doing great today. Are you okay? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we're doing good here. Doing good here. So, uh, 23 studio albums. Man, that, does it get hard to come up with subjects to write about? Uh, it can do, yeah, sometimes. I mean, you have to, I have to sort of, uh, I have to sort of, um, you know, concentrate quite hard and uh, get a lot of ideas then, you know, before I start writing, mm-hmm. uh, just generally from my brain, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's always difficult to come up with new ideas and, and things to uh, and things to write about. But um, you know, it seems to be still working okay. The old brain, so that's okay. Okay. So, uh, does the main riff of the song usually inspire? Does that usually give you something? Because one thing I notice, you guys, you're good at history. Give give us a lot of history, which I love. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, with these, you know, the songs, you know, I'll have a lot of titles and, and bits and pieces of lyrics before we start writing music. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a matter of, of putting my ideas with the guitarists, really, that come along. I mean, this album, we wanted to uh, have a more, uh, how can I put it, more sort of guitar-orientated riff bit more riffy at the beginning so you know i wanted the boys to um, come up with uh, you know great ideas uh, for the guitarists basically and then they sent them all to me and i sort of picked the ones that um, that i liked really okay so uh one of the previous appearances on the show you told us you you guys had you had like 11 songs written for the new album but you guys were like scattered through the uk and germany and stuff so how did how did you guys put this album together? Did did you get into a studio, or did you each do your parts somewhere else? Well, we we we, we went in the studio. We wrote the songs quite a while ago, actually. Uh, you know the initial ideas, and uh, we went into a studio uh, and rehearsed uh, the songs before before COVID hit, mm-hmm. basically. Uh, oh. So yeah, it was. It was. Uh, then after that, once COVID hit, um, you know, we couldn't really do much at all for a while. So mm-hmm. we, uh, I think, Nigel did the drums in Germany before the restrictions started, uh-huh. and um, and then we did uh, the guitarist did some work at Andy's place, and then most everything else was done at my studio uh, here in uh, in my home. So. It was very mixed, really, in and out, you know. I mean, the guys would come when they could uh, to record. And I did the vocals all here on myself and the song, really. So he was engineering the uh, the album, you know, the vocal part of the album. So mm-hmm. worked out pretty good, really. Yeah, I see your son, he sang, helped with the backing vocals, record, helped recording the vocals and stuff. So that must be pretty cool. Yeah, well, he was engineering, engineering the vocals. Oh, okay. You know, uh, on, on the, on, you know... Signed from to the desk, yeah. and then he was doing a few backing vocals, you know. So nice, um, nice. Yeah, I think it's nice to have a different voice on there. We used to do it back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. getting uh, some friends and people to do vocal with us. But nice. um, you know, this one, uh, he was there, and it was easy to do, really. And he's a great singer, so yeah. it basically worked out quite good, you know. Yeah, I like the Heavy Water album you guys, you and your son, put out. Must be pretty cool having your son follow in your musical footsteps. Uh, yeah, well, obviously he's got his own footsteps. He's not really uh, yeah, yeah. a normal uh, artist. But yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, uh, it's good having another musician in the band, another singer, because, um, you know, we've still got something to talk about around the dinner table. So. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's good fun really. I mean, we get off on uh, you know each other's sort of uh, stuff that we do. If you know what I mean. Oh, well, that's cool. Now, uh, what are your plans? Are there plans? There's, there's got to be some plans to go out and do do some touring on this, right? 
Well, we're doing um, we're doing uh, two shows at the end of this month uh, in uh, in the UK, which we've postponed now mm-hmm. for the last two years. So we're uh-huh. finally going to do them, uh, and their 40th anniversary show with the big the big castle and eagle and everything. Oh, nice! So, um, and then uh, we were planning to come to America in April, but mm-hmm. um, I don't think really. It's going to happen. I see. I don't, I don't think the promoters are very confident yet. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're just looking at that. Uh, we're doing festivals all the summer, okay. uh, supposedly, um, oh. and then we're doing an, uh, we're doing a we're doing the uh, Carpe Diem Seize the Day tour in September in the UK and Europe. So I don't know really. I mean, things are up in the air. Yeah, yeah. Like the US is concerned. So with. 23 albums worth of material coming up with a set list i mean geez if you just picked one song off each album that's that's over an over a set i mean come, it must be kind of hard well, to whittle, be, yeah. whittle down which ones you're gonna you know you got your favorites well, i know but then then you know you got to get the new album yeah, in, we, so. we've done the, we've we've done this show a few times already so the set was fairly uh fairly set actually mm-hmm. it's sort of Goes through goes through all the uh, all the sort of uh, generations of albums, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it's working out okay actually. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can do them on the end at the end of January. Awesome. We can get moving on to other things. You know? Awesome, awesome. Now uh, I got to listen to the album before Christmas a few times, and dude. I love it, and there's the the last song on the album, "Black Is the Night," is really cool. I really love the way it kind of just slows down in the middle for the guitar solo and everything, and that it picks back up. Yeah, I mean, how how did that song come together? Because that's a really cool tune. I really. But it came, it came from a riff of uh, of Nibs the bass players. Uh, oh, okay. He plays a lot of guitar. Uh, I just had the idea to do a song about the, you know, the Arctic or the Antarctic, you know, the poles. It being, you know, it, it's in winter, it's dark all day and all night, you know, it's just like endless darkness. So mm. I started to be cool to write, uh, write a song about it, really. Ah. But that's what really ends up about that song, the, uh, the Earth's poles, really, the North Pole and the South Pole. Ah, Okay. Now, uh, Red Brick City, your album, your Heavy Water album, was really good. Now, is there any any plans for a follow up album? Yeah, we're making it now. I mean, we're just uh, about to start doing the drums this week. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, we're putting that together while we've got time. Uh, so yeah, there'll be another Heavy Water album coming out. Oh, cool, cool. Now, uh, you work. On this album, uh, Carpe Diem, there's, you're working with Andy Sneap again, producing. Now, what does he bring to the table? Because he's pretty popular, man. He's producing everybody, it seems like, anymore. Um, yeah, Andy's great. I mean, you've got a great, so you've got a great ear, really, is what, what you need for an engineer, definitely. Um, and it, it works well together with me. Uh, you know, we work together on the albums, and... Uh, yeah, he's a child of the eighties, really. So he he has a good um, he has a good handle on how uh, you know bands like uh, Saxon Priest uh, huh. should sound, really. Um, so we trust him to do the guitar sounds and everything, you know. Um, but I think Andy's involved was probably early in the you know when we started writing the stuff. He was involved with uh, with me choosing the choosing the tracks that we thought would go forward for an album track, if you know what I mean. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, we, we uh, I mean, once we're making the album, it was pretty much between me and him, really. Ah. You know, he was doing the guitars and uh, bits and pieces. So, yeah, it's very, this album's very sort of uh, not normal, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, when I talked to you, when you put out the Inspirations covers album, I asked you if there was any bands that you you wanted to do, do a cover of, but you didn't get a chance to, and you, you had mentioned Kiss, and I didn't bother following up, but I wanted to follow up now. What Kiss tune would you have wanted to put on the album? Which Kiss tune? 
Yeah, you said. Uh, are, you saying, are, are you saying Kiss? I yeah, Kiss. You. Yeah, the band Kiss. Uh, you uh, were... Well, my favorite Kiss track is Detroit Rock City. Oh, that would have been good. Oh. So that would be the. Uh, but I, I'll let you into a secret. We've already recorded Inspirations 2. Dude, I was just going to ask you if there's any plans <laughs> for another one because I loved the last one. Yeah, we've just, we've just finished recording it. In fact, I was just listening to the vocals tonight, actually, before I send them off. Oh. Uh, to our engineer to have it mixed. No uh, so yeah, awesome. So we've we've done. Uh, I mean, Detroit Rock City is in the songs that we've done. Okay. Whether they will end up on the album or not, I don't know. It depends. Depends how exciting it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Very cool. And they're very. These songs are very hard to, to, to do better. You can't really do them better. <laughs> I mean, the Kiss, the Kiss, the Kiss album that this one's off. Um, sounds fantastic. It's a fantastic sounding album, actually. It's um, nice, nice. Quite ahead of its time, production wise. So you know, it's quite an exciting sound they've got on there. But you know, it sounds good. What we've done sounds great. Awesome, awesome. Now, recording these days is a lot different than back in the '80s and stuff. Uh, what's your favorite piece of new technology when it comes to recording? I mean, is it in being a favorite to... piece of technology. Yeah, I think uh, I think probably you know the the, the, the Pro Tools and the Logic stuff. You know, the oh yeah, computer based, digital. I think I think we use we use a lot of both. We use analogs. Uh, we use analog outboard gear with digital. We do use lots of things. You know, we we're always. Uh, we're always mixing things up, so mm-hmm. sometimes we use analog and sometimes we won't, you know. So I think uh, when I do vocals, I, I tend to have a lot of analog stuff running, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, but when we do, uh, you know, say drums, I just think it's all done down on digital. So uh-huh. a mixture, really, it's a mixture. Mm. You know, we've learned how to use all the technology in the last, you know, 40, 50 years. And, uh, you know, we use it all, right? Everything we have at our fingertips, we use. Nice, nice. Now, uh, what would be the one Saxon song you're most proud of? I know that's a tough one, because there's a lot. <laughs> the one Saxon fact, you're saying? A Saxon song that you're... Saxon you're most... song I'm most proud of? Yes, yeah. Uh, well, it varies, really, you know. Mm-hmm. It varies. Um, it depends. Um I, I mean, I think I'm quite proud of most of them, actually. Mm. Um, but, you know, my my side of, of writing comes from... I mean, I will write occasional uh, things on guitar and bass, but mm-hmm. most of my involvement in the songs is arrangement, melody, mm-hmm. and lyrics, mm-hmm. which only really leaves, the, leaves a bit of music left. So, um, I think... I think I think I like um, the new album. There's a song called "There's a song called Pilgrimage." Uh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Which is pretty, I think it's pretty cool that song. I, yeah. I wanted to write a song about, you know, what pilgrimage means. The word means, mm-hmm. and um, it goes through different. The, the verses go through different uh, sort of uh, eons of about what pilgrimages are. So mm-hmm. I quite like that song. Oh, very cool, very cool. Now, I read somewhere that Harry Shearer, the bass player in uh, the Spinal Tap movie, actually went on the road with you guys before they did that movie. Now, is that true? And uh, did he get I any... I can't remember. I can't, I can't remember him being with us, actually. Ah. And if, if he did go with us, he certainly wasn't on tour for very long, maybe one night. Yeah, yeah that's but, something uh, that... Are, yeah. maybe, I wasn't, maybe I wasn't there, I don't know. Ah, okay. Uh, Maybe maybe I was off with some <laughs> with some girl somewhere yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but um, I can't really remember. Although the bass player in Spinal Tap mm-hmm. was obviously copied off Steve Dawson, oh. the bass player in Saxon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I can't really remember it. I went to the mm-hmm. premiere of uh, Spinal Tap. What did you think? You know, um, oh, it was cool. <laughs> that was good. That's you know, it's um, yeah, it's just. You know, it's like, a, it's not a documentary, is it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, yeah, it was good. It was quite yeah. funny, you know. Did you... I tend to like the English, 
Another, there's been another, there's another thing called uh, bad news, mm. which is quite, um, which is quite a sort of, uh, you know, inside look at the music business, which is a little bit more close to home. Mm. But, uh, spinal Tap's okay, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, have you got a, a Spinal Tap moment that happened to you guys out on tour? I think Spinal Tap moments happen to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, imagine. Uh, do they have Lewis Hamilton had a spinal tap moment in the last Grand Prix, didn't they? But um, yeah, I mean, you know, people always get go through the wrong door, don't they? Or <laughs> get lost, falling yeah. over at the worst possible time. <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, spinal tap thing. It's it's a bit slapstick, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's just, um, you know, it's more, uh, you know, it's on the film. Mm-hmm. Things are happening every every minute of the day. Yeah. It's not really like that, you know. But you might. Um, you know, bands do get lost under under venues. You know, <laughs> yeah. Nobody tells them where to go and things like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Now with uh, with Carpe Diem, is this? Can we get it on pre order? Can we order it somewhere, or is this... yeah, you can get it on pre order. It's been actually been out on pre order. Okay. For uh, three weeks now, I think. Okay, and uh... I think it came out in November on pre order. I assume maybe three months. I don't know, but yeah, you can pre order it. Okay. Um, you know, if you, if, you, if you type it in, it'll tell you where to do it. I'll go on our websites or Facebook site or my site. You know, all all the uh, all the social media platforms have got it on there. Okay. You can definitely pre-order it. All right. I, uh, yeah. I got the Thunderbolt album, and it's signed by everybody. It's like crazy. Are you guys uh, Are you guys doing that with this one too? Doing signed copies of the album? The vinyl? Uh, we haven't done any yet, no. I don't think we've done any yet, but I might be wrong because I'm always signing things. <laughs> okay. I mean, I might, I might be wrong on that. There might be might be some signed ones out there. Okay. But, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, if there is a bit of, you'll, be, you'll see it straight away. Oh, yeah. There are some signed copies, you know. All right. Well, man, I can't wait for this album to come out and everybody else to get a chance to listen to it because it's just slamming. Uh now we're gonna. Yeah, uh, we'd like to. We'd like to. We'd like to tour on it. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see a tour on that for sure. Yeah. Now uh, we're gonna play the song "Remember the Fallen" to go out of the interview. What can you tell me about this song? I know it's a contemporary. Well, right up it's there a history. song. It's about COVID, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was in. I, I couldn't really decide whether to put the song on the album or not. And I did the lyrics for it. Um, I mean, the riffs are very old school Saxon, mm. I think. Um, but, you know, I wrote the lyrics about it, uh, you know, about the people that have died mm-hmm. uh, far too early and not knowing why, really. So I just thought I'd put it out and see what people thought. Yeah, so it's a song dedicated to the people that have died of COVID, really, okay. around the world. Okay. And, um, I still think people don't understand really what happened, yeah. but um, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it, if you take it as it's sang, you know, it's just a, uh, it's just a sort of uh, a song to remember people, really. Cool, very cool. Well, we're going to spin that right now. And uh, Biff Byford, it's been an honor having you on the show again, and you're welcome here anytime. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you, and. Uh, so hopefully we can um, get out there and start touring and uh, having some fun.